so we continue from question 44 uh, a child was born at a gestational age of 34 weeks in grave condition the lady symptoms were received respiratory distress respiratory distress namely sonorous and prolonged respiration involving additional muscles in the respiratory process the Silverman score at birth was zero points and in three hours it was three points Silverman score is issue is used to uh, examine the respiratory status of uh, premature uh, neonates or premature children premature neonates so zero is actually a very good skill so zero points uh, is the best skill normal in three hours it was three with clinical findings which diagnosis study we allowed to diagnose the form of pneumopathy the, the, the what we want to do first is we want to just do a shake x-ray we are talking about respiratory uh, condition here three is not very bad but the there are signs of respiratory distress ten is the worst it means uh, respiratory failure ten year old girl consulted a doctor about tests frequent urination weight loss she has been observing these symptoms for about a month these are signs of could say early signs of diabetes suspicion uh, no pathology of internal gas were revealed so what test do we carry out in the first place you want to check for the blood glucose of this patient on an empty stomach on an empty stomach since the patient is already symptomatic you don't want to give do give glucose and then evaluate so you want to it's best is to check on, on an empty stomach this is your child complaints of frequent liquid stool and vomiting again we've seen these questions over and over again because already they are telling that there is painful segment colon that's something else tender tenderness and segment colon and defecation we see streaks of green so this is shigellosis and they are telling about segment colon shigellosis this is a four year old boy timely vaccination he complains of painful swallowing headache inertness and fever tonsils are covered with sorry with gray white pellicles which cannot be easily removed when you're hearing that something cannot be easily removed there's one thing they always want us to think of in internal medicine and surgery and pediatrics that is diphtheria diphtheria it cannot be easily removed it bleeds when you remove and when you try to scratch it off oropharyngeal diphtheria a 10 year old child had been beaten by by b and he was delivered to the hospital. You can see that the lip, face, and neck, there is edema in those regions. Patient felt hot and short of breathing, short of breath. Breathing was labored and noisy. Foaming discharge from the mouth and cough. Skin was pale and cold. There was bradypnea. All sounds were muffled and arrhythmic. Tready pulse was present. Tready pulse is showing us signs of shock. So that's uh, this is this is not quench edema because in, in, in quench edema you are going to see swollen lips and so on but you are not going to be having signs of shock so here we have tready pulse and so on telling us about signs of shock so this is a patient that is having anaphylactic shock due to the bee sting due to being beaten by a bee please take note of that because of the shock a 13 year old girl complains of fever up to 37.4 you can notice every other thing there you can see puppy. this is Death of palpation, we have esophthalmos, tachycardia. What condition can result in that when you are having, uh, uh, when you are having a palpable thyroid gland? That is um, condition of hyperthyroidism, and that is thyrotoxicosis. This is thyrotoxicosis. Thyroto you have excess thyroid hormone that will be causing increase in this fever is not due to infection, it's due to increase in metabolic rate. A three-year-old girl present with pathesis like cough with thick sputum. There have been persistent changes in lungs since the age of six months when she said she was first diagnosed with acute pneumonia. Acute pneumonia. Chloride concentration in the they don't tell us about chloride for fun. So, what is the basis of autosomal recessive disease mucoviscidiosis? It is usually a result of inadequate transport of the sodium and chloride A or CTFR gene also. So this is inadequate transport of sodium. Uh, and chloride ions and also note from the question that mucoviscidiosis or cell fibrosis and autosomal recessive disease it might just be the only question you have in one in the exam they ask how is inherited autosomal recessive 
hand, this question will just distribute two major things. There are tenders about a patient pulling the side from umbilical wound. If you are not patient, you will simply go for omphalitis. It's not omphalitis because patient is having, as out of that, patient is having generalized hemorrhagic crash. When you have such systemic manifestation about the body, it means that there is already development of uh, another condition from the underlying local manifestation. So an air from omphalitis, patient can develop sepsis. So this is already signs of sepsis, even though we don't have so much details. But when they tell you about pulling the from a medical car and they went for that and said there is generalized slash, please, it's safer to go for sepsis. Sepsis. From urine of a 14-year-old boy with the exacerbation of secondary obstructive pyelonephritis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa was isolated. Which antibiotic is the most advisable to be administered in this case? You see, for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, it's, uh, it's gram-negative. There is one particular antibiotic that is very good, active against many antibiotics, uh, gram-negative, especially even Pseudomonas, and that is ciprofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, the fluoroquinolone. Okay, cardiology. Uh, I think a lot of us have certain mindset towards cardiology question, but we've been trying to reason them out, and there are there are many of them. There are many questions in crop about cardiology, and they are not so difficult if you just pay attention to certain things. For example, this question is a 14-year-old boy with history of chronic tonsillitis and so on. Now let's look at the ECG. We have regular impulses with no visible P wave that occur every two sinus contractions. QRS complex is dramatically deformed and prolonged over 0.11 seconds. T wave is discordant and so on. This question is not like it's very clear, but this is a condition of like an SR system. We are having contractions, yet we are not having visible P waves. And when they are telling us that QRS complex is deformed, which means that the origin of the SR system again, like we said, is probably within the vent, most likely within the ventricles. So the question is this extra systole that we are having, is it a trigeminal extra systole or a bigeminal extra systole? Now notice this word prolonged over 0.112. So when they tell us about the prolongation of the timing, that is a trigeminal extra systole. When they tell us about the shortening of the timing, that is a bigeminal extra system. So this answer to this question is a trigeminal extra system. So please take note of that. This is not a bundled blood drug, this is extra system. That's why you're having contractions without visible pure. Is this a repetition? No. Eight-year-old girl periodically has sudden short term heart pain, sensation of uh, chest compression and so on. Let's go to the ECG. ECG taken during an attack shows ectopic p waves ectopic p waves you know krs complex is not deformed again when the second is not deformed so we cannot think oh maybe it is supraventricular it's not within the ventricle so and yet the the rh is 185 so at the end of an attack a compensative process is the most likely cause so if it is supraventricular so we are we are thinking of uh we are thinking of two major uh things yeah we are thinking of, is it atrial fibrillation or is paroxysmal atrial tachycardia because both of them can cause such increased artery. But one thing is that they said on the ECG, an attack shows ectopic P waves. Now, in atrial fibrillation, you are going to be having the waves, but the P waves are not distinct. You will not see the P waves. You are going to have more, like many contractions, abnormal waves, but you cannot pinpoint the P waves. But in paroxysmal atrial tachycardia, you will see those ectopic p waves you will see the p waves so the p waves are going to be absent in atrial fibrillation but be present in paroxysmal atrial tachycardia so we just differentiated it for that okay because KRS is normal it is supraventricular so is it paroxysmal atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation is not going to have visible p waves there that is the absence of p waves while we have the p waves in paroxysmal atrial tachycardia all right, this 10 year old with history of non rheumatic arthritis, periodic attack, heart pain, dyspnea, pallor, high blood pressure, increase in heart rate. The fact is, we need to treat this patient with a beta blocker. You see, elevated heart rate and so on, and that's oxidant. 
of Sibam. We said already that lidocaine is used for uh, ventricular uh, tachyarrhythmias and also procinamide at the house is an antiarrhythmic agent though. but here we need to decrease the pressure that is by oxidam the panel of. a doctor admitted a cause of ultraviolet radiation so decide if the child needs ego calciferol what's happening this child one month old that is restless increase in air sweating the child has been filled with calmic examination revealed cranial taps so the answer of this question is two to five months after i hope this kind of question they just have to repeat it verbatim if they want to if they want to access again two to two and a half months after their violence we will drop 15 minutes after the second vaccination with dtp vaccine a four month old boy exhibited the symptoms of quinks edema what medication should be given for uh emergency aid for for quinks edema the answer is pregnant so long, pregnant so long, does this allergic reaction pregnant so long. A baby is three months old. Three months old, the, the, the mother consulted the pediatrician by lack of breast milk. After several tests went, it was found out that the child had to receive supplementary feeding. What is the optimal milk formula for this child? Anyway, just cram this question. They said the answer is malish. Examination of newborn reveals skin redness, which appeared immediate, which appeared immediately after birth, and which mass mom tested on the second day of life. You see, there's erythema, then it increases on the second day of life. It is still a simple erythema. Simple erythema. We are going to have several other questions, but it's still simple erythema. A child is two days old. Born with weight of 29 body length, this for our respiration is present, respiratory rate, this cardiac sounds are rhythmic, sonorous, liver extends below the costal diuresis, di sufficient twist of meconium. What is the, this? Is this is just physiological retirement of newborn? Physiological, you know, on the second date, this is just all these things are norm, they are norm, norm, norm. A full time baby was born with body weight of 32. Abgast what is the normal time for the first breastfeeding? You breastfeed the child within the first 30 minutes. First 30 minutes. First 30 minutes. A three-year-old child has been taken to a pediatrician. So they are they are they are asking us that at three years, which vaccine do you give? You see, we are going to say another question that is at eleven years. But I, I said earlier that polymyelitis is very common in children that is below the age up to the age of seven. So you the vaccine must be earlier. So at three years old, give polio vaccine. Vaccine against poliomyelitis. This question is one of eleven years old, and here the answer is diphtheria and tetanus, DPT, diphtheria and tetanus. So we continue from here immediately.